Hi everybody, welcome to another Progport Podcast interview. This is Roy, hope you guys are doing well out there. My guest on this episode is none other than legendary guitarist from Genesis, Steve Hackett. Uh, he's continuing his Genesis Revisited tours. Uh, we talk about the upcoming North America Foxtrot at 50 tour, uh, the live release coming out soon on September 15th, and everything else he has going on. Before we get started with that interview, just a reminder to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us wherever you get your podcasts, progreport.com, and check out all our socials to stay up to date on everything. And now my chat with Steve Hackett. Hey, there <laughs> he is. How you going? How are you doing? Good, man. How have you been? How are you? All right, yeah, yeah. It's just been crazy busy. We just uh, did a, a South American tour, four countries, and we got back two days ago. Um, and yeah, as crazy as you, you can imagine, South America gets, you know. Uh, yeah. But uh, but it went well, and that's that was great. So uh, looking forward to coming to the states in a month's time. Meanwhile, I start recording again tomorrow to finish off a new album. <laughs> and we've got Foxtrot at 50 coming out, the live version of that, mixed by Chris Lord Algie. Sure, done sure. a great job. Well, we're, well that's, the, so, that's what we're going to get into. Yeah, I want to talk to you all yeah, about that. There you go. Uh, sure. But um, my goodness, you're uh, you're as busy as ever. I, I mean, I know. There, there's some bands I talk to that, you know, are, are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever, and yeah. they are not remotely as busy as you. It's, it's unbelievable. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, you know, who would have thought that at this age that uh, one would be doing what I'm doing? But, you know, uh, um, uh, the music still feels fresh. Yeah. And I'm playing every day, doing things that I could only dream about at one time and writing things and recording things that one only dreamt about at one time. New technologies are wonderful techniques. Uh, it's, it's actually a very exciting time in music. I just wish I had more time to, you know, be able to record and more time to tour because, you know, they're opposite ends of the, of the spectrum in terms of what you can do physically. But um, I do know yeah. guys who are in the in the in the in the rehearsal room and the dressing room, you know, putting finishing touches to albums and stuff like that. And I think, how do you do that? You've got one set in right. your head. You can go out and do that, and then you. You're working on yeah, that's how they do it. They have a laptop after the show. That's and they, right. They, that's right. Yeah, that's it. Whole... You know, it spreads in. You just give up sleep. It just gets in the way. <laughs> right. There's no point, really. Yeah, but exactly. I do collect things. I collect things as we as we go because it's a bit like second camera unit. You know, we've been recording live drums in theatres. Um, uh, makes me sound like a terrible slave driver, I know, but it makes it makes a difference. It, it makes for a, a heavier sound and. Uh, I'm really thrilled with the way things are shaping up with with new recordings. Well, that's uh, that's one one of the questions that I had, but I, it applies to this. How much has changed for you, even not just from back in you know the early days, but even in the last ten years? They, there's new technology for guitars and amps and things and mics every yeah. day. There's there's new stuff. Yeah. Are you constantly looking and changing stuff? Or are you set for this is what I like and and that's it? Um, no, I, I cannot afford to be uh, uh, fixed. I, I, I have to change. Um, for instance, I got some stuff stolen when I was, was, was away and they were, you know, it wouldn't be a big deal for anyone else. But, you know, I, I had this ring on my finger for 50 years plus and it was adjustable stainless steel and I use it as part of the playing to access certain noises and maneuvers and, and oh, wow. what have you and and uh, and that got 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 uh, it got stolen and oh. uh, and my slide and bolt neck and nail files and the, these sorts of things and um and so there i was yesterday uh back a day lawyers meeting straight away ah just around the corner from denmark street tin pan alley go in buy stuff so there i am you know uh, in in a guitar shop going, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, I could wait for this stuff to be delivered by others, but I'm in a hurry, you know, and I'm starting work tomorrow. So, um, uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm very dependent on my toys. You know, what you used to have to torture people with volume. The tyranny of volume was well known. Yeah, martial amps crack, cranked up. Sure. 
taking taking people's heads off and ruining your hearing. Uh, we can get those sounds these days uh, without being de volume dependent. Shredding is no longer dependent on 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 volume. So right. um, the delinquent factor gets kind of taken out of the equation. And so I can make guitars scream and howl um, wonderfully. And you can hold a conversation over the top if you're recording at that time. But yeah, you know, it's sort of test tube baby time, really. Um, that's just how, how it is. Uh, but it's wonderful to have have that and, and not be, you know, held to account. The, the whole notion of waking up the neighbours is some anachronism from from way back. Right. Yeah. Sure. No, we don't wake up neighbours. They wake me up. It's their <laughs> dog next door, I tell you. <laughs> And the tinier the dog, the bigger the noise. And if I recall, well, they, and that's the truth. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, crazy. Uh, hey, life's crazy. What can I tell you? Um, it's it's really it's really nuts right now. I was trying to do interviews on the way back from. Uh, I've been held up in, a, in in an accident, and um, and of course, <laughs> reception's going in and out. So that doesn't really work either. It's just. Uh, um, uh, and driving a new car at the same time, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> crazy. How does this work? Well, they go, yeah, hi there. You know, uh, um, uh, no. I, I know. Well, I yeah, definitely this way is better. Um, yeah. But the last, I mean, Relative. you have to look back at the last, let's say, I don't know, 10, 15 years now since the Genesis yeah. revisited stuff kind of started. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you? I mean, I think maybe at the time you thought I'll do this once. You know, it'll yes. be a nice tour, right? And then all of a sudden. Yeah. It's the most popular thing ever, and they, people can't get enough of it. Why? Well, how do you look at that? I mean, are you surprised still? Um, well, if I'm honest, rather than diplomatic, I I would say that doing this stuff now uh, means that we've got virtuoso players at the top of their game who are able to pull this stuff off with power and precision and passion, all the P's, you know, uh, and it sounds extraordinary material that was, it was on the cusp of what we were physically able to play back in the day when it was new. But with all this time and technique, when you realize that um, a track like Watch of the Skies, in order to make that intelligible, it has to be slowed down a bit. Um, otherwise, um, that staccato rhythm that drives the thing yeah. it just becomes one long single note. <laughs> some acoustics are going to do that. Yeah, some crazy 6 4 rhythm that, that we had then. But so we do it at a, at a more measured pace so that you can not only drink it in, but also you allow the ambience of the hall to do its work and give it the majesty that it deserves. Um, the modern take on it is very different. I, I don't use the same vintage gear. I leave that to tribute bands. Um, mm. I make sounds that I could only have dreamt of back in the day. Guitars that sustain on board, on board feedback from the guitar itself. The Fernandez guitars um, possess that quality with the sustainer right. pickup. So uh, lovely to have that and have the, the, the tram arm on it. You know, so many ways of of doing that finger vibrato, um, so many ways of doing it, uh, uh, yeah. using the tremolo arm. I noticed that Jeff Beck, God rest his soul, towards the end of his career, was seemed like he virtually given up finger tremolo, and he was using the you know the whammy bar for that. Um, but it is a different sound. It's a different. It's 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 a different kind of tremolo. Um, so yeah, th th these are the things that that can concern guitarists being able to make it sustain, howl, sing, perfect tremolo tuning, all of these things. It's a lifetime chasing all that, you know. Right. Let alone what the tremolo arm can do, well, not I... just the dive bombs, but so many other effects. You know, we're still discovering what the mechanics of, of guitar yeah. is all about. I mean, I've seen the show now myself 
I feel like 10, 12 times. I don't know. I think. But, really? Wow. And well, between the cruise to the edge and the times if you've been in town and, and all yes. sorts of times. But I, it's, it's at, listen, I, I tell people this all the time. It's my favorite concert. I can see it cool, every day. And I tell people, if you haven't seen it, you have to see this show because it's not whatever you think it is. It's it's better than that. Like it, it's because the songs, first of all, the songs are the greatest songs possibly ever. But then the way you guys pull them off, it's so great. And I have to I have to give props also to the band. Like you said, I wanted to ask you about the current lineup and how spectacular yeah. they are. And also Ned Sylvan, really, who has grown into this role over the, the, the last decade to the yeah. most amazing frontman for this stuff. Talk about those guys a little bit and how everything yeah. sounds and sure. they're, they're so good. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of the band. I, I do think they are the best band around. Um, that isn't something that I said, but it was other players who've worked with me in the past who were saying to me, this is the best band you've ever had. Um, very generously, um, just the rhythm section alone, um, combination of Craig Bland Blundell on drums and Jonas Reingold on bass. If you took away all the other instruments and you just heard that, um, th the power of what they do is extraordinary. I, I don't know how they do what they do. Um, I don't know how you can hit the drums that loud. I don't know how you can move around that fast on bass as as Jonas does when those things are you know cables, you 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 you're um what are you doing? You, you you're tiptoeing through hurricanes of sound, wading through cables, but still <laughs> able to flit through those notes. I don't know how he does that. And then the other side of the stage, um, there's uh, Rob Townsend, who's jazz professor, multi instrumentalist. Um, when I first started working with him, it was for his sax playing abilities, but then his flute playing abilities caught up with that and whistles and various things and duduk and all sorts of stuff. So he's sort of Mr. Woodwind, Mr. Brass, brass uh, uh, extra yeah, keyboard amazing. stuff, occasional uh, percussion things. He was trained as a percussionist, first of all. So he is a, an absolutely brilliant soloist. And... Um, both a jazzer, but also very melodic. Um, if I ask for a wild solo from him, he'll do that. But then if I ask for something melodic, it'll be uh, extraordinary. You don't really have to shout the changes at him. He can respond to just about anything that he's hearing for the first time, get himself in and out of trouble. Hmm. It's an incredible facility. Um, then there's Roger King, who was trained as a cathedral organist, classical player. Um, he then, somewhere down the line, took an engineering course and went that route and ended up doing film music, recording various people, um, did the music for Cliffhanger and um, right. the movie, and In the Name of the Father, to mention just two. And so he's a very, very gifted arranger. Very droll sense of humour. I'll be working with him tomorrow. Uh, he's a man of few words, but um, yes, economical language, but you know, a, a wealth of possibility in terms of what he's got in his audio wardrobe. Um, it, it's it's extraordinary. So, orchestral arrangements. I've been relying on him more and more uh, for that kind of stuff. So we we negotiate every note. I, I'm instinctive. He's trained. Um, and that combination works very well. But then Nad Silver, as you said, uh, Nad always wanted to be the singer of, of Genesis. Um, I don't know what drove him to that, whether it was in love of what Peter Gabriel did or, or Phil Collins. I think he loved all of it, and he's got yeah. that kind of stentorian, there's a good word, in other <laughs> words, brass-like brass voice that covers that that um, that rock singer's area. He can also sing very, very high as well. Sure. Um, and um, he um, just has the you know this tremendous ability to uh, be not only Peter Gabriel and Phil Collins vocally and be almost indistinguishable, but he's also um, 
I was doing one of the tracks that I'd recorded with Richie Havens. And that voice is deeper than either of those two. And he was able to achieve it. And my God, uh, it was extraordinary. You know, because when you hear his speaking voice, it's actually no deeper than mine or yours. Sure. But then yeah. there's something that goes on when he opens up the pipes and, um, you know, he's got all these, um, uh, these, these, these levels and, and, uh, it's 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 extraordinary, and his own solo career is taking off, um, which is lovely. I mean, he's probably three or four albums into a solo. Yeah, I think he's done four, as, and uh, as well. yeah, they're great. Love them. Yeah, yeah sure. lovely albums. Uh, sound really, really, really great. So uh, I, yeah, I, I'm thrilled to be working with him, and he, he very generously said, you know, he said, I'll do this for as long as you want me. You know, and I just think, well, isn't that lovely? You know, and he's a pal, and we love him, and uh, all of the all the guys in this band. Um, I just hope I I get to keep it together till Kingdom Come. You know, I I, I just uh, I, I know it. I know it's extraordinary, and I've worked with other extraordinary players and singers, and what have you. But this particular circus on the road is is really fantastic. Yeah, and good guys too. It's got to make it easier to like like everybody oh, and yeah. get along and everything. Yeah, a great sense of humor helps when you're shattered and it's part and parcel of touring. Yeah. So, uh, well, we have the Fox Trotted 50 uh, live set coming out uh, September yep. 15th. Um, yep. You know, you've been doing this this thing, you, the tours around different albums and then putting yeah. out a live live uh, uh, retrospective of each of them. Uh, yes. At, yes. And everybody seems to eat all those up <laughs> every time you do them, uh, which is amazing. But they're all really spectacular live records. They sound great. They look great when there's a Blu-ray and, and that kind of thing. What's been, or if you have, do you have a favorite among them that you've done in the in the last few years? You know, it's it's a tricky thing. The um, Having had the new one mixed by Chris Lord Algie, there is a difference. Uh, it's brighter, it's more compressed, but it really suits the nature of it. I mean, we were doing, I think we were playing to an audience of about 4,000 at the time in Brighton. And um, the, you know, it's got that, that kind of, uh, kind of arena sound to it. That, that's what he's kind of given it, you know. Um, the songs sound bigger and brighter than they ever were. And, um, and, you know, he gets Grammy Awards. It's not just my shirt here, you know, saying Grammy on it. <laughs> it but he, you know, Chris gets Grammy Awards for the things that he does. And um, I think this stuff sounds spectacular. Um, people always used to say back in the day that Genesis sounded far better live than we did on record. They were early examples of recording um, there were limits to what we could pull off, yeah. what you could put on record. Um, the changes that time has wrought, I think, has only improved the quality of sound. Um, and a lot of time to think about it, a lot of time to get it right. Um, yeah. It's a great sounding record. There's also, it's not just Foxtrot, there's almost an hour's worth of solo yeah. stuff on it as well. So, um, and some people prefer that and saying to me, oh, you know, we want to hear more of your solo stuff because we know the Genesis stuff and, and what have you. And um, Jonas in the band said, I actually prefer playing the solo stuff. I think he gets more chance to move in that. You know, uh, I, I give everyone free reign as long as, the songs sound authentic as long as it's got the right spirit you know we we get to change things around extend solos rather than change them uh we might exchange a, a flute part for um a soprano sax part so that'll sound sort of oboe-esque um right. the devil's in the detail we love doing it these guys play wonderfully they're all on a new album that i'm working on at the moment that i've got i've got a month to finish touch wood <laughs> that's great uh, that's another record fantastic there's another record in the pipeline and it's very exciting i'm very excited by it 
just let me near the ball to be in the game again with recording. Because the trouble is, when you're doing as many shows as I've been doing in recent years, um, there's not a lot of time to go, oh, here we are. Yeah. It always used to feel great, you know, working in a huge studios. You know, it's the bridge of the enterprise, Captain. And, you know, that feeling of, of but most people are working, you know, in, in their in their homes. Right. It's Nowadays. all been downsized. But the secret is to try and make the music sound ever more universal and personal in that way. Uh, it, it needs t- to still have an adventurous spirit. You can't let that be killed by miniaturization, downsizing, and all the other strictures. And people saying, well, no one's got the attention span to be able to listen to a 23-minute piece of music like Supper's Ready anymore. Well, everything I do flies in the face of that. And I think well, hell, you know, um, I want to be taken. I want to be taken on a journey by something extraordinary. Um, I know that young minds and ears and all that, you know, you live the songs. All of us were taken by Sergeant Pepper. Every musician I know, Sergeant Pepper, the audio adventure that was that, the, the film for the ear that was that, you, you know, the birth of the progressive thing and and um and the birth of world music you know embodied in you know that extraordinary band who had the world's ear at that time and then i think you know all the extraordinary blues bands that i saw number one i would say paul butterfield blues band with paul and mike bloomfield and eldon bishop just blew the socks off you know the the audience I was standing there with about 19 other people watching these guys just, you know, just flatness. Those well, I were think great if you, I think if you expose younger people to music like this, they, yeah. they, they don't know that when they're young enough, they don't know that they're not supposed to like it. Do you know what I mean? Ah, I think that's it. When you're not supposed to like it. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to like jazz until I was watching King Crimson thinking, is that guitar? Is it sax? Actually, it's all twinned. And the important thing is that, no, there is no more guitar and sax. It is Gax. I mean, it is, yeah, you know, this yeah. This is it. The birth of, of you know, people say it, it was the first progressive band. And, of course, you know, I befriended the Crimson guys. And sure. I've worked with tons of them, as I did the Yes guys, worked with tons of them. There's been so much crossover. Loved working with Chris Squire. Um, loved working with you know all the you know Steve Howell the guys from from Yes with the GTR thing and the Squacket thing with Chris Squire loved doing all that um, and um, and Crimson too you know I mean it's countless amount of people I've worked with the entire rhythm section of King Crimson past and present I think you know um, sure yeah you know a wonderful uh, to and do it's, that and it's, it's all still. Story. It's all still the best music, you know. I mean, well, I want to make sure we, before I let you go, I want to, before I let you go, because I I think you have more interviews today. Uh, I do, unfortunately. I'm I'm glad you're Yeah, so let me me wrap you up here. Um, But uh, you have the the Foxtrot of 50 North American tour, which is starting very soon, uh, October 3rd, I think. And then it goes through about six weeks through November. Um, You're coming on Cruise to the Edge next year, which will be great. I will be there. So I I hope to see you there. Uh, Thank you. Again. And uh, uh, I want to ask you, I mean, uh, you've been you've been traveling like crazy the last yeah. forever years. I mean, yes. are you tired? <laughs> Am I tired? Um, it's a way of life. But, you know, being in that kind of um, that half world of completely exhausted, but completely thrilled and inspired is is where my my life is right now you know it's some of the greatest stuff that i've ever been involved with doing is at the moment sometimes working with another guitarist as i did with the genetics guys and um you know listening to leo fernandez uh, and swapping solos with him it's been hugely um it's been hugely great i mean we've just become such fans of each other um so yeah, that's been uh, just just bloody wonderful, really. Uh, there aren't enough hours in the day, of course, but you know. Well, 
Keep it well, up, my friend. Uh, always a you. pleasure to we'll talk to you and to see you and uh, say you. hi to Joe. And uh, we'll, we'll see you on Thank Cruise you. to the Edge. All right. Good luck yes, on the tour. Brilliant. Okay. All right. Bye. Brilliant. Bye. Okay. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Check us out on all our socials and on progreport.com for all your news, interviews, reviews, and more. And we'll see you again real soon.